Hello, I want to welcome you to the Doctor's Black Bag Lecture Series. This is brought to you by the Partnership for Environmental Education and Rural Health. I'm Dr. Dan Posey. I'm a clinical associate professor with the College of Veterinary Medicine at Texas A&M University, and I'm a veterinarian. The lecture series today is on physical exams and their importance. You know, we all want our loved ones to be healthy our families, our friends, and of course, our pets. Our objectives today is to explain why physical exams are so important to the health of your pets, to identify the different vital signs associated with your pets, and to be able to, to perform a physical exam and monitor your own pet's health. So. First thing is, do you have any pets? The next thing would be, is have you ever been to a veterinary clinic? And lastly, what does a veterinarian do when you take, and we're gonna use your pet, for their yearly appointment? So, so why are physical exams so important? Well, the first thing is, it allows us to find signs of sickness that are just not obvious to everybody else. That's what we train in veterinary school for. This is why we train our students here at Texas A&M University, is to see the subtle changes that happen associated with illness. And then the other thing is, the physical exams associated with injury, and to make sure what type of injuries, and identify and classify those injuries. The physical exam is really important in veterinary medicine. It's the way that we look at the body because there's all these different systems that are going on. For example, the respiratory system, or the digestive system, or the neurological system. And if they're not working pop properly, they medically affect more than just the system. For example, if you have pneumonia, you also, it makes you have fever and you may not want to eat. If you have meningitis. It may affect the way you, uh, be, your ability to take care of yourself, be able to get food to yourself because of the, the neurological tissue is not functioning correctly. So the veterinarian does a physical exam to get these subtle changes that you may not recognize as an owner. So for example, take out my stethoscope, I listen to the dog's heart, and when I listen to the dog's heart, I hear a heart murmur that you couldn't feel or see or do anything with without having a stethoscope. Or, we weigh your dog and we measure your dog and we see that maybe the growth problem associated with that dog through a thorough physical exam. Or maybe your dog has mange or maybe your dog has a flea allergy. Well, by examining the skin, we can tell that. And lastly, by doing some uh, laboratory testing, for example, a fecal test, we actually can find parasites that would be affecting your dog or cat. The first thing that happens when you bring your pet to the veterinarian is they check the history. A thorough history is very, very important and it helps us uh, focus where we need to look for the problems if this animal is sick or look for problems that might be occurring that you really don't know what's going on with your animal. So, First thing we do is we look through past history. We look at the individual records of every animal, review that to see where we are in, in past treatments and, and how things are going on, if this is a perfectly normal animal or not. But we generate a record because we want to keep up with what's going on with your individual animal. Your pet is very important to us. The next thing we do is we go through history taking. And so we ask the owner some questions. And last thing is we listen carefully to the questions that were asked. And I think this is really important to understand how important that the history taking is in veterinary medicine. So, let's say you have a German Shepherd and uh, you're coming in for your annual visit and the owner uh, states that, you know, you've noticed that um, the, the pet has been coughing at night goes to bed perfectly normal, sleep in there next to the bed, but hears them get up and cough at night. Well, to me, as a layperson, I would have thought, oh my goodness, that sounds like a respiratory disease. 
but really, that's probably the subtle signs associated with a cardiac or a heart problem. What's happening is the heart's slowing down because they're in sleep, and what, because the heart's not functioning correctly, it builds up fluid in the lungs, and the pet needs to get up, the German Shepherd needs to get up and move around a little bit to make the heart rate go up, and then the fluid disappears. And that subtle little change like that could make the difference in making a good diagnosis in your pet. Or maybe your dog has gained a lot of weight. And if it gained a lot of weight, and it was, uh, let's say it was, uh, you noticed that you'd had some weight gain associated with your, your dog, and also that it seemed like you wasn't tolerant to the cold. Uh, you know, the dog wants to lay in the bed all day, okay? And you've noticed that. That could be the subtle signs of hypothyroidism, or where the thyroid gland is not producing enough of the hormone to help this dog be normal and that's what's causing the weight gain or the intolerance to cold. So what's your impression on this one? So here's a puppy here. What do you think? Skin, muscle tone, movement, behavior, attitude. What do you think? Normal dog? What about these? You know, veterinarians just don't work on small animals, they work on all animals. And so you look at this group of pigs, is this normal behavior? Do these pigs look normal? Are there sick animals there? Or how about these? This group of cattle here, this herd, veterinarians are trained to observe, take history, and do a really good physical exam to see what's going on here. So, what are the tools that we use and a physical exam. Well, we use, just like they do in human medicine, we do stethoscopes, otoscopes, that's for the ears, thermometers, pin lights, and then uh, neuro hammers. So, usually the first thing after history taking, the physical exam is done. And so, some veterinarians start with a stethoscope and they're listening to the animal's hearts and lungs. The next thing the veterinarian may do is take the, the animal's temperature. This is done by a thom thermometer and can be done rectally. We can't put the thermometer in the animal's mouth because they would break the, the thermometer. Or there are some new technologies out there in which we go inside the ear just like they do on little babies. Uh, you actually put it in the ear and take the temperature that way. So the main important thing about temperature is, is that an increased temperature is fever. And fever means something to us in veterinary medicine. We, we, is it bad that we have fever? Well, sometimes it's an indication of what's going on in the animal's body. And it determines the, actually the diagnosis and the treatment protocols that, that would go on. After the heart, respiration, and temperatures are measured, then what we do is a physical exam from the nose to the tip of the tail of the animal. Physical exam is really important and needs to be done properly and thoroughly on each animal that we, are, we have the opportunity to look at. So, after the physical exam, sometimes veterinarians will want to take samples from the animal to confirm the diagnosis. So what they do is, is they'll take blood samples or urine samples or fecal sample from the animal. And when they do that, they'll run tests on that to find out what's going on. The last thing in your annual visit would be, of course, the vaccinations that you came in for. And so the, uh, that would be the last thing that was done. If everything checked out normal and they let you know and the animal was healthy enough to take the vaccinations, to do the rabies vaccination or, or the distemper parvo and corona in the dogs, those vaccinations, at that time, then that would be the last thing that would be given. So, what are the normal values of all the different animals? So when we look at normal values, and these are normal reference range values, you can see that the cat is different than the dog. You see the respiration in a cat is 16 to 40, where a horse is just 10 to 14. And the temperature is 99 in a horse, but in a goat it's 102.3. So. When we start looking at that, 
does a dog, normal values, the same as a, ca a calf? Or is a horse the same as a guinea pig? And of course it's not at all. That each animal has its normal reference ranges associated. The important part of this is, is that normal behavior of your animal is something that we need to be, to open a conversation about. There's normal behavior associated with every animal and that normal behavior for your animal would be different than the normal behavior of other species. And so veterinarians have specific knowledge about normal behavior. This helps in the diagnosis of illness and final finding normal animals. So, we're looking for a partnership in health by you monitoring your own pet's health. It's really important that, you know, you as a informed pet owner or animal owner understand things like is the respiratory rate increased in this animal? Is the heart rate going up? Is this really a swelling? Does the animal have fever? Is there a behavioral change? Because I know what normal is. Now the animal's acting abnormally. Well, the veterinarian would be, what's the difference? Does the animal lack energy? Is, he, is the animal depressed? Those are the things in this open dialogue between you and your veterinarian. And this partnership in health is very important to, to veterinarians and their, and their clients. I'm sure you may have questions that have ar arisen the, today as we're discussing this physical exam and, and what veterinarians offer to their patients and clients. And so your teacher there can help you with those questions. I uh, really appreciate you taking time out today of, uh, and looking at the Doctor's Black Bag uh, lecture series. And this is brought to you by the Partnership in Environmental Education and Rural Health. Thank you.